In this video, we're going to consider running a t-test and uh, calculating effect sizes. So we're going to use the uh, Chow unmatched data set we've imported from Excel. And let's see. Uh, so let's just get started. So to do a t-test, we analyze compare means and this is going to be lens type, and that was were different um, subjects in each group, so it's an independent samples t-test. And we want to look at the variables. We'll just pick a few of them here. You can get the idea. Um, And the grouping variable is lens type. And it has two levels, 0 and 1. And so we, we, get, a, uh, we get this output. Now, the current version that we have actually also calculates independent effect sizes. But if you have an earlier version, what you will want to do is copy, well, first of all, we can look at the significance, and we look at, make sure whether or not the uh, the variances were equal. That's Levine's test for equality of variances. If we reject the null hypothesis, we say they're not equal. And it's not too bad. The, the KT axis, which is kind of a weird variable anyway, um, is significant. We're probably not going to be considering either the KT axis or the axis in, in many of our analyses. So that means we look at the, uh, we're going to assume they're equal. So the significance for um, sphere is 0.584 and, and not, or that's degrees of freedom, sorry, 0.556 and not 0.551. So let's look at um, how we would do effect sizes. Even though they're not significant, assuming they were significant, but these are these are baseline groups and it's kind of a good thing that they're not different, but in some cases they could be. Okay, let's copy this and then let's open Excel. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do our calculations in Excel, just letting Excel kind of act as a, uh, as a calculator, but a calculator that records things. So we've copied that output. Now, there's two ways you can paste. You can paste with this nice format look, or you can paste with this. I tend to do the non-formatted one because the other has uh, some features that it, it Excel, when it goes into Excel, it, it doesn't let it always be used quite the way you would like. All right, now we see here we have the means and we have the standard deviations. And so our formula is equal. And aspheric was the group that came second in the observational study, so I usually, I would consider spherical the reference group. So because it's a reference group, I'd put it second. So I'm going to um, subtract aspheric or spherical from aspheric. Notice in, uh, if you're not familiar with Excel and how formulas work, you put in an equal sign anytime you want to do a, a, you're going to have more than one number in a cell. And so we're going to equal and then parenthesis. We highlight the aspheric and subtract from the spheric. We divide by the average of these two. Now, um, in R, for example, the average was the, called the mean. And in Excel, average is called average. And so we're going to take the average of the first, it doesn't matter what order you do these. So it's uh, average of the first standard deviation, comma. Um, 
when they're together and you're doing a long line of things, you can do a colon and that puts everything in order. So it's going from E3 to E4. If if we were averaging across different things that weren't in sequence, we would separate the two by a comma. All right, and there there is your answer that it does not like. Why doesn't it like that? Oh, <laughs> it's usually best if you don't try and average two uh, two words. So we're going to put the means over the standard deviations. There we go. And then we might want to reduce the number of decimal points. And we do that with this little symbol up here. Could decimal decrease decimals, increase decimals. Let's take it down to three digits. And now um, we could highlight this little guy in the corner here and go right down. And then that's going to repeat that formula all the way down. The problem is that every other one if we click on this space here, we see that we're comparing aspheric to spherical of cylinder versus sphere, and that's not really what we want to do. So we could either um, copy, and, and also notice that when you copy, it does a relative change. So for example, let's delete this one, and let's look at this guy. So up here, when we click on the formula here, it shows the boxes that we are we are using, the values in the formula. If we come down here, click that, we notice, relatively speaking, it's the same one. Even though we did not uh, change where we were, uh, we didn't type in this. It just knows, relatively speaking, what's what. So we have to go down and delete every other that's not the correct thing. So here we go. We come down. We see all of these effect sizes are very small. They're all under 0.2. Anytime an effect size is less than 0.2, it's pretty trivial and we want to ignore it. Our, our rule of thumb for, for clinical relevance is 0.5, but uh, that's how you do effect size.